the Evil Loan. Aluta was a well-known community in the state, ruled by King Yuza III who took over the throne shortly after his father, King Amodi, passed away. In Nigeria, particularly in Igbo land, it is customary for a son to inherit the throne upon his father's death, ensuring the continuity of leadership. Good afternoon, esteemed members of my cabinet. You may be curious about the purpose of this meeting, but rest assured, it is for a noble purpose. Timothy has been a source of hope for our community of Aluta. Previously, our survivor depended solely on farming, but he has single-handedly provided jobs and sent many youths abroad for education. Therefore, in recognition of his selfless contributions, he deserves a chieftaincy title to honor his exemplary deeds. The chiefs applauded in agreement with the king's words. Timothy, a man in his late forties, arrived in the village a few months ago, offering assistance to the needy by providing food and support. Despite leaving the community with nothing years ago, his newfound wealth raised eyebrows, but his generosity towards the community especially the widows and elderly brought joy to the villagers. Upon hearing of the community's intention to bestow a chieftaincy title upon him, Timothy was grateful for the recognition. I am humbled to accept this title, my king. I am simply a man blessed by God, striving to aid my people in any way I can. May you reign long, my king, Timothy expressed, bowing before the king as a sign of respect. It was decided that Timothy's chieftaincy coronation would take place a month to come at the palace. This was to enable Timothy get a wife. My elders, are you leaving without meeting me? You know what I can do. Come, let me bless you, Timothy called out to the elders who were about to leave the palace after the meeting. As he offered them money, the elders couldn't contain their joy, showering him with praises. The man everyone speaks highly of is truly doing great deeds. To me, Timo, you are worth to be a king, and if not for tradition, we would crown you personally. A good man born on a Sunday, may the ground you walk on bring you favor. May your wealth multiply. Thank you so much, one elder spoke on behalf of the group as they nodded in agreement. Thank you, my elders. I bid you farewell, Timothy responded before departing in his car. Reflecting on the elders' words, he muttered, to think they see me as a king. Perhaps the chieftaincy coronation could turn into a kingship coronation. Just teasing. I am merely fulfilling my duty to help my people. With those thoughts, Timothy drove back to his mansion across the road. As Timothy honked on the massive gate, his gateman, Alfred, hurried over and swung it open for him as he drove in. Good evening, sir, Alfred said, one young man is here to look for you. Who is the young man? Timothy inquired. Maybe one of the villagers, he's waiting at the corridor, Alfred replied. Timothy looked over the front of his house and spotted a young man standing there. He walked over to meet him and the young man greeted him, Good evening, sir. Good evening, young man. How can I help you? Timothy asked. The young man explained, Sir, I have heard about your good works in the community, and I have come to seek your help to start a business of my own. Ken was a young man who had taken on the responsibility of providing for his two siblings after the tragic loss of their parents. Upon hearing of Timothy's reputation for generosity, he decided to approach him for assistance in starting a business. Timothy wanted to help Ken right away, but he knew that the money required to kickstart a business was not a small sum to have readily available. What is your name, young man? Timothy asked. Ken, sir, the hopeful Ken responded. Come back tomorrow, Ken. We will discuss the type of business you have in mind and its capital requirements. I've just returned from a meeting at the palace, and I'm quite exhausted, Timothy said to Ken, who left happily. This opportunity could potentially lift Ken and his siblings out of poverty. It was in the middle of the night, exactly at 12 midnight, when a cat flew onto the roof of Timothy's building, crying. This was a regular occurrence as every night the cat would come and cry there. 
The gateman had told Timothy about this, but Timothy dismissed it as either a normal cat or a cat sent by his enemies. He reassured the gateman not to worry. As the cat continued to cry, a skeletal hand suddenly woke Timothy up, a beast face covering his own. It's time. It's time. It's time, sang an unseen voice, and Timothy got up, dressed in a black and red gown, tied a red scarf around his head, and held the skeletal hand, disappearing to a room with red light, the smell of incense hanging in the air, and candlelight encircling the room. In the center, there were twelve skeletal heads, an ancient pot, and a large standing mirror. At the end of the room, an old man with a white beard sat on a throne, surrounded by two half-dressed women with glowing red eyes. To the left, there were five men dressed like Timothy, and to the right, there were six more. Timothy joined those on the left to make up the five. The great twelve sons of Lucifer, welcome to another meeting of this kingdom. A night that pleases our gods, where mortals become immortal and the living turn into the dead. Tonight we assign new tasks to my sons, the old man on the throne announced, with the men echoing in agreement. The women then carried the pot over to the old man with utmost respect. Each of you, come forth and choose your fate from this pot. Whatever you pick must be accomplished in the next seven days, the old man instructed, and the men echoed his words. As our father commands, so shall we obey. When it was Timothy's turn, he reached into the pot and pulled out a folded paper. Written boldly on it was, a grown virgin man's destiny is needed for your wealth to continue flowing. My father, how can I get his destiny? Timothy asked, confused. He had been one never to lay with women, as that was how his wealth was sustained. By sleeping with men, their destinies added to his. As usual, find the young virgin man, do what you must to bring him to your bed. After the act, your task is complete, the old man instructed, as smiles spread across their faces. The following day, Ken arrived and knocked on the gate. The gateman, Alfred, granted him entry. Wait here, let me inform the boss that you're here, Alfred said, rushing inside to let Timothy know of Ken's arrival. Boss, the young man from yesterday is here to see you. Quickly, bring him in, Timothy replied. As Ken entered the mansion, Timothy greeted him with a smile, inviting him to sit beside him. You mentioned that you needed money to start your business, right? Timothy inquired, to which Ken gave a nod in confirmation. Starting a business requires a large amount of capital, and being a businessman myself, providing such a large sum for free would affect me financially. However, I am willing to assist you with some money, though it will be in the form of a loan, Timothy explained. Ken was grateful for the help offered, understanding that he could repay the loan once his business was up and running. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the assistance, even if it is in the form of a loan. I will work hard to repay you. May God bless you, Ken expressed his gratitude by kneeling before Timothy, thanking him sincerely. Wait a minute, let me get the money for you, Timothy said as he rose up, going to his bedroom to get the money. Inside of his bedroom was another small room built within it. Nobody could ever imagine that there is a room there. Unlocking the room with its key, Timothy went inside it and locked the door. The room was very dark, looking exactly like a shrine. He walked to where a big ancient pot filled with money was and packed some wraps of money in a nylon bag, after several incantations took it downstairs to give to the waiting Ken. This is N10 million naira. You can use it to open any business of your choice, but you have to pay back any time I demand for it, Timothy said to Ken who gently took the money from him. He has heard a lot about Timothy's generosity and didn't think he is going to ask for a refund any time soon. Thanks once again, sir. I promise to pay back promptly. I will be on my way now, Ken said, standing up to leave. Come and give me a hug, boy, Timothy said, hugging Ken and caressing his back. Ken didn't suspect anything and besides, he is his fellow man. 
though he felt uncomfortable with his inappropriate touches, didn't say a word. Releasing himself from the unending hug, Ken had a strange question from Timothy. Have you known any woman before? It was confusing why Timothy would want to know such a thing about him, but Ken had to answer for the favor he had done for him by lending him money. No. Sir, Ken answered. What would make a handsome guy like you from getting a woman of your own? Or you don't like women, Timothy said, walking round Ken. This was meant to be personal, but the reason he was asking him all these questions was unknown to Ken. I have a lot of responsibilities awaiting me. My brother and sister are my responsibility. I'm the only one seeing them through secondary school, and getting a girlfriend or a wife will add to my expenses. That's the reason, sir, Ken calmly replied. Timothy smiled to himself, signaling Ken to take his leave. This young man has saved me the stress of going to look for a virgin young man. I will have to figure out a way to get him to sleep with me. By any means at all, Timothy muttered to himself, relaxing on his couch. Ken went back home and shared the good news with his siblings who rejoiced with him. My big brother will soon be a businessman, become rich and move out of the village, Daniela said happily, hugging Ken. Daniela was in her final class in secondary school, currently waiting for her WAC. She was intelligent beyond imagination and had won many competitions for her school. Ken promised himself to do everything within his power to send her to the university. The next day, Ken went and met with an agent to help him find a shop that is in sight and can attract sales to him. The agent agreed, promising to let him know when he found one. As he went back home that day, Ken went inside to take some rest when his younger brother, Samua, ran back home, screaming. What is wrong, Samua? Why are you screaming? And looking at the time, you are not supposed to be back by now, Ken asked eagerly. Brother, it is Daniela. Samua exclaimed. What happened to her? Early this afternoon, she fell down while climbing the stairs that lead to her class. She has been hospitalized and the principal said I should come and let you know so you could see her condition, Samoa tearfully said, with Ken hurriedly heading to the hospital. Upon arriving at the hospital, Ken wasted no time and rushed into the doctor's office, consumed with worry about his sister Danielle's condition. Doctor, how is my sister? What's happening to her? Ken's voice trembled with concern. I'm glad you're here, young man. Your sister is in a critical state, and without immediate intervention, she may not make it. One of her kidneys has failed, and we need to perform a transplant, the doctor explained gravely. Ken's heart sank, but he was determined to do whatever it takes to save Danielle. Please go ahead with the operation. Save her, doctor, he pleaded, tears streaming down his face. But the doctor's next words it Ken like a thunderstorm. The cost is not that affordable. It will amount to 15 million naira, including postoperative care. Ken was heartbroken as he offered his own kidney, only to discover it wasn't a match. With no other options, Ken faced the reality of coming up with a large sum. Feeling helpless, Ken wrestled with his thoughts. Should I go back to Timothy for help? Will he be willing to assist again? Asking for more would seem ungrateful, but I can't bear to lose my sister. I must try, Ken concluded, leaving Samoa to watch over Daniel as he went out, hopeful yet afraid about the outcome. Ken arrived at Timothy's house, knocking on the gate. The gateman, recognizing Ken, allowed him in and informed Timothy of his presence. Following Timothy's instructions, the gateman allowed Ken inside. Upon entering the sitting room, Ken was confused as Timothy was nowhere to be seen. It was only when Timothy called out for him to come upstairs to his bedroom that Ken realized he was upstairs. Following Timothy up the stairs, Ken reached his room. Timothy greeted Ken with a smile, concealing his wicked intentions. What brings you here again? I thought we had resolved everything, Timothy questioned, faking innocence while secretly knowing of what he done to Danielle. 
My sister is hospitalized, sir, and the doctor requires 15 million naira for a transplant. Can you please assist with 5 million naira to add to what I have? Ken asked. I can help you on one condition. You must sleep with me, and then I will provide the funds you need, Timothy said, moving around Ken and touching him inappropriately in an attempt to lure him. Ken was shocked by Timothy's demand. He couldn't believe his ears. You are aware that I am also a man, right, sir? Ken queried. Yes, I know, my dear. Trust me, you won't regret it. This is the only way I can help you. Sleep with me for the money you need, or refuse and witness your sister's death. I know you care so much for her to let her die when you have the opportunity to save her. Timothy responded shamelessly, his face filled with smile. 